Hello and welcome to the Andy Green Show, a total experiment, another fat guy doing a show from his apartment, uh, and yeah, that's what this show basically is. And we got five segments for you, I'm going to try to make this show at least ten minutes long, but I don't know if you've ever tried to make a show that's ten minutes long, it's a lot of each of those minutes, it's really, really hard to do. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try. I know what Yoda said, I know the whole thing. So I don't need your shit right now. But now it's time for our first segment. What's going on with me? Well, I keep continuously trying to lose weight and it's awesome now because I lost even more weight, which is 219 pounds is what I'm down to now. So uh, I'm coming up on 100 pounds that I've lost, which is very, very cool for me. Although I still have the uh, pants that I wore when I was really, really fat. So I got to figure all that out as far as what to do about my pants. But that's all history, and this is history ridiculous. Now it's time for history ridiculous. Dropping water levels revealed a gigantic complex of Roman ruins in Spain as Europe continues to struggle under a record-breaking drought. Ancient Romans began construction on a military camp in what is now northwestern Spain along the Lima River in Galicia in about 75 AD. They abandoned the camp about a century later. The remaining ruins became submerged after the construction of a dam in 1949 created the As Conches Reservoir, the Guardian reported. But this summer, all droughts led to Rome. The ancient camp reappeared on the riverbank, its entire ruined complex on display. Sure, the earth's running out of water and dying, but at least we can learn some stuff and see some cool things on the way out. That's nice. Now, I don't know about you, but I sure am scared as hell about space. It's up there, man. Stars, gas, all kinds of stuff. And that's why I invented this segment. Space time, the times of space. Extraterrestrial water has been discovered for the first time in a meteorite that landed in the UK. The meteorite crashed into a driveway in the Gloucestershire town of Winchombe last February and is believed to hold clues about where the water in the Earth's vast oceans came from. Some 12% of the sample was made up of water and offers a lot of insights since it was the least contaminated specimen to be collected, according to Ashley King, a researcher in the Planetary Materials Group at the Natural History Museum. The composition of that water is very, very similar to the composition of water in the Earth's ocean, he told the British Science Festival, which sounds like a hell of a festival. It's a really good piece of evidence that asteroids and bodies like Winchome made a very important contribution to the Earth's oceans. Dr. King also confirmed that it was the first time a meteorite containing extraterrestrial water, albeit locked up in minerals, had fallen in the UK in the historic Cotswold town. Every single one of their cities is the craziest names possible over there, but water and space? What's next? Will they have ice cubes too? And they'll have to figure out where the, where they got the, where how they tra put them in ice cube trays and made all that ice. Don't think about it too much. Your mind will snap. You gotta get more mentally healthier. A study published in NeuroImage reports suggests that video games can lead to increased decision making skills and improvement in brain activities. Video games may have a reputation as being a lazy activity. They can be very engaging for the brains of the players due to their sensory rich and cognitively stimulating nature. Video game playing requires the ability to make quick decisions and pay attention to details while playing the game. And they're enjoyed by all walks of life, but the beneficial effects on decision making abilities and the brain are not exactly known, said researcher Mukesh Damala, an associate professor in Georgia State's Department of Physics and Astronomy and the university's Neuroscience Institute. Previous research has shown video game playing to be linked to improvements in working memory, attention, task switching, spatial, spatial resolution, and more. This study seeks to better understand the effects of video game playing has on the brain. So I know that I've played a lot of video games and I sure am hell, I'm awesome, I'm very smart. Welcome to Need Some Strange. At 7.15 p.m. on September 12, 1952, two brothers, Edward and Fred May, and their friend Tommy Heyer, 
said that they saw a bright object cross the sky and land on the property of local farmer G. Bailey Fisher. The boys went to the home of Kathleen May, where they told their story. May accompanied them by three boys, local children Neil Nunley and Ronnie Shaver and West Virginia National Guardsman Eugene Lemon. They went to the Fisher farm in an effort to locate whatever it was the boys had said they had seen. The group reached to the top of a hill where Nunley said they saw a pulsing red light. Lemon said he aimed a flashlight in that direction and momentarily saw a tall man-like figure with a round red face surrounded by a pointed hood-like shape. Descriptions varied in an article for Fate magazine based on his tape-recorded interviews. UFO writer Gray Barker described the figure as approximately 10 feet tall with a round blood-red face, a large pointed hood-like shape around the face, eyes-like shapes which emitted a greenish-orange light and a dark black or green body, and they described it as having claw-like hands. And uh, according to the story, the figure made a hissing sound and glided towards the group, at that point, Lemon screamed and dropped his flashlight, causing the group to run away. A September 14, 1952 news clip from the Charleston Daily Mail states, The group said that they had smelled a pungent mist, and some later said that they were nauseated. The local sheriff and a deputy had been investigating reports of a crashed aircraft in the area. They searched the site of the reported monster, but saw, heard, and smelled nothing. According to Barker's account the next day, uh, Lee Stewart Jr. of the Braxton Democrat claimed to have discovered skid marks in the field and an odd deposit, which were subsequently attributed by UFO enthusiast groups as evidence of a saucer landing. But uh, sounds to me that it was just a drunk on stilts. That's usually nine times out of ten when something real freaky happens. It's uh, it's usually just uh, just drunk. Or uh, drugged up people on stilts if they're 10 feet tall. All right, now's the time on the Andy Green Show when we set some goals. So, what was I? I'm at 219 pounds. Next week, I'd like to get to uh, 217 pounds, if at all possible. So, I'm going to give that a try. If you got a goal, go ahead and leave it in the comments and I'll try my best to... Go, hey, that's awesome that you're setting goals and that you have dreams and you want to achieve things. That's great news. Uh, so set some goals. And also don't forget to click uh, subscribe and like and all that and turn your notifications on because YouTube's never telling anybody when my show happens. And I'll see you for the next episode of The Andy Green Show.